Hey guys, welcome to Reddit Brew. You know the drill, we're back at it again with the Reddit stories. So let's jump into it, shall we? Mother-in-law disowns my sister and her son because I am autistic. So this happened about a year ago, but I wanted to share. I am autistic and my sister isn't. About seven years ago, she met a man and fell in love with him. He is the nicest person I have ever met and I love that him and my sister are married. In contrast, his mother is the rudest person. During the wedding planning, she tried to micromanage every detail because she wanted her precious son to have a perfect wedding and he's practically my groom her real words. His mother also does not like the disabled, neurodivergent, or mentally ill. So for months, she tried to control the wedding, but her son and my sister shut her down. I was also heavily involved in the planning since I was maid of honor. Day of the wedding comes and everything is wonderful. My sister is beautiful and her husband is amazing and sweet. The problem starts at the reception. I never spent much time around Mill. Nobody did. So that probably explains how she did not know that I was autistic. My sister included me in food planning, but there was still food I had never had. Since I was young, to combat my food aversion and sensory issues, we've always had a three bite rule. I take three bites of any new food to see if I could eat it. This day, my sister had some kind of pasta dish on her plate. No idea what it was, it was spicy tasting and red with vegetables. My my sister saw me make a face at it and asked if I wanted to take three bites off her plate. Might seem weird, but this has happened our whole lives. I take the food and am trying it when Mill starts making loud comments of why I am behaving like an uncultured pig by eating off someone else's plate. Her son quickly jumps in and tells her that I am autistic and I am doing that because I have never had the food. Well, this did not work to calm her down, but instead instead made her explode. She starts screaming and people start to look towards her. She starts crying and asking her son why he married someone with a retarded sister and that her grandbabies were going to be retarded. She starts going on and on about how she can't understand why he would do this to her and begging him to divorce my sister right then. My brother-in-law refuses and tells her to stop making a scene and this sets her off more. She starts screaming that he hates her and he planned this to destroy her life. She goes on screaming incoherently for a few minutes while some relatives try to take her outside to calm down. She does go outside eventually and everything is awkward. No one knows what to do, but after a couple of minutes, people just go back to eating and socializing. My sister and her husband go off to apologize for her mother-in-law's behaviors and I start talking to some of my cousins. About 20 minutes later, however, the mill storms back in and goes over to my sister and Bill and starts yelling about how she never wants to see them again. Tells him he is removed from her will, says any children they have together are not her grandbabies, then threatens to call the police if she sees him or her at any family gathering from then on out. She says some more albeist shit and then leaves the reception. My sister breaks down crying at this point and ends the reception early. It's been a year since this happened and Mill has kept her word. She has had no contact with her son or any other family because this episode was the last straw for most of his family and she is not invited to family gatherings anymore. My sister is now pregnant and her Mill will likely never know the kid, which is probably for the best. Ugh, good riddance. Honestly, I don't even understand the explosion in the first place. Neurodivergent or not, it's not unusual to share things off someone's plate, especially your sisters. I share food with my family all the time. I think Mill was just looking for an excuse to be dramatic and ruin the event. And this was it. But like I said, good riddance. Apparently, me and my husband are competing against my sister-in-law for best wedding. Ever since our engagement, my sister-in-law has been acting like it's a competition that my husband and I are both very unwillingly participating in. She got engaged a month after us, then attempted to schedule her wedding the month before us. 
which would have forced my husband's family to fly across the country twice within a very short amount of time because she wanted to have the bigger guest list. When my male talked her down from that, she instead scheduled for the month after us, but made up for it by choosing to extend the celebration to three days up from one day. But then her ideal church didn't have an available day, so she pushed it back again. So one day is dedicated to her first ceremony, one to her second cultural ceremony, and one to her reception. All planned for outdoors, in Florida, in late July, next to a lake. No, no weather plan needed, and no hats allowed apparently. And we better take four days off work, cause she might need us to do things. Oh, and unlike us, she won't be doing anti-bug measures because those are eyesores and or smell bad. Our wedding is one day, 100% indoors, and we still provided anti-bug measures on our venue's patio in case people wanted to step away from the party and enjoy the breeze. Food was a big part of our wedding because we are foodies to our cores. We didn't serve traditional food at our wedding, which caused a surprising amount of friction with my parents and parents parents-in-law leading up to it. But the day of, they sang the praises of our food non-stop after trying it. As we were leaving our wedding, she came up to us to say goodbye, then told us to look forward to her wedding because hers would be more about fun than food. The next day, she proceeded to text me all the details, including, but not limited to, having jet skis for her guests to rent. Oh, and make sure we have $300 each because she will be having the guests cover the jet ski rentals, among other things. No, they aren't optional because she wants to do a jet ski send-off. Also, can we drive to the other end of the state to pick up her catering the day of her reception? It's going to be even better than ours. Trust her. Don't worry, we are already drafting our absolutely not reply. Also, no offense, but having board games and arcade cabinets was so juvenile. She's going to have more adult games like beanbag tossing and a photo booth. No hate, just wanting to give us notes for our next big party. Seriously, why this weird competitive edge? I get the sibling rivalry angle, but my own sisters aren't anything like this and my husband doesn't care about this stuff. It's just this one sister-in-law. And honestly, I wouldn't care about this whole weird competition thing, except it's really going to negatively affect me, my husband, my new family, and any guests she invites with these odd judgment calls about the number of days and the weather and all that. I'm sorry, a jet ski send off? A jet ski send off. Yes, what could possibly go wrong with a bunch of amateur riders trying to make a jet ski aisle? Ay caramba, great googly moogly if you will, to each their own, but I never understood why some people care so much about extravagant weddings. I assure you that 99% of the people attending do not care about you getting married as much as you do. And if your guests are required to be uncomfortable for vanity reasons or pay any amount of money to attend, then you are a narcissistic piece of poop in my opinion, and I would be RSVPing no to this wedding faster than Garfield finds lasagna. But anyway, that is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed these two Entitled People stories. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I truly appreciate when you do, and I will see you in the next Reddit story. Bye!